Hey guys, Will Mosby here back with yet another DIY video and in this video I'm going to show you how to make your very own DIY outdoor fireplace. So stick around, it's coming up. Alright, so I have had this project going on and, and in my bag now for uh, coming up on two years. I actually started this project uh, when we bought the house back in November of 2019 and uh, finished the project in May of 2020 or thereabouts roughly. Okay, so here we are in January 2022. So I've had a lot of I've had this footage for a while now. I've been meaning to uh, uh, To produce this video and finally got a chance to you can see all the snow in the background So a couple days off gave me a chance to uh, sit around and do some editing and finally give this thing some much needed attention. All right, so enough of all that. This is, you know, a six month project, maybe seven month project that I'm gonna try to cram into a real short video and the best that I can do that, no kidding, I'm gonna take six, seven months and cram it into about 20 minutes. So if you wanna actually just jump ahead to the build process of me walking through step by step, level by level on how to create that thing, go down in the description and I have some chapters down there so where you can just kind of jump ahead. Uh, but if you want all the context of how I arrived at this, uh, stick through this little first beginning here, this little intro, and we're going to go and catch you up to speed on, on how we arrived at a 14-foot uh, fireplace. So whenever we built the house, we had this back patio section that was perfect for extending it with a covered pergola. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted a pergola back here. We wanted it covered so it would be dry back here so we could have you know, a nice outdoor living space. And when my wife and I were talking about it, I said it'd be great to have a fire pit or a fireplace. I've never built a fireplace before. So we decided on a fireplace. So we had to coordinate with the team that was actually putting in the covered pergola up here and uh, get all of our dimensions, what we wanted to do. Uh, so it was, it was quite the little process. And I had to find plans that would kind of teach me how to build a fireplace. I did that uh, over at a website called DIY outdoorfireplaces.com and Dan over there um, gave me or I actually went through his plans and found plans that would sort of work. I'm going to kind of show you those uh, as I talk here uh, on, a, on a kind of a screen capture. All right let's stop there for just a second we'll jump in here to the uh, PDF plans. This is the uh, it is DIY outdoorfireplaces.com but his uh, other business there, Dan, was Backyard Flare LLC. And these are the plans that I purchased. And you can see this is what the original would have looked like if we would have built it to those specs and those plans. But as we go on down, he gives you a material list and all that stuff and approximated cost. I know I'm buzzing through this really quick because I'm going to get down here and show you. There you go. So level one, row one. Uh, those are 30 cinder blocks. Uh, row two, same thing for, for my situation. Because I wanted a hearth. Um, and, and then we built around it. You'll see that in the, in the build. And then row three. So he goes through step by step. And you can actually see how to lay each cinder block uh, as it's positioned in here. And what you're going to actually need in the description. So it's, it's great. And then by the time you reach up here to... Um, the level when you're going to close it off right there with the angle iron you're going to close that off and start um, making your your chimney i had to actually take this row right here row seven row eight and extend it up to the point where it would be above um, our pergola uh, out back and and then we had to to bring it in just a little bit so we could create our chimney. So I found these plans from Dan and we talked it through and he was super, super helpful at, you know, to coordinate with me what I wanted to do. His plans only went up to about eh, six feet, about where the mantle is right there. And then they ended because they weren't made to go up and connect with an outdoor pergola of this size. And so we kind of talked it through and said, all right, just take this level and repeat this level all the way up until you get up to the height that you actually needed. Um, and so that's exactly what I did and uh, it worked out great. This is a wood burning, as you can see in the background. We've got a lot of wind here and I just started the fire a second ago. Uh, so it doesn't have enough heat to really push that uh, up just yet, but 
I started it just so you could see that it was a wood burning fireplace uh, with a gas starter and, and yeah, the gas is still on uh, right now. We'll shut it off here in just a second. Yeah, and sorry about all the dripping and popping and cracking and stuff like that. We had some uh, weather come through uh, our area and uh, now you're hearing all the runoff, the melting going on and you're seeing stuff in the background just falling from trees. <laughs> But anyway, I took these plans, we modified them to kind of fit what we wanted to do. And uh, now I think I'm gonna take you around and, and take the camera and kind of walk you through what we kind of developed and then we'll jump into the actual build process. Here we go. All right, so we have, here's the, the covered pergola, which sealed us in here, so not a whole lot of moisture. And then you guys remember this project when I did the uh, hot tub. Yeah, we got a little snow and ice going on. But uh, this is a fairly good size project here and you might be thinking there's no way that I could uh, finish this or, or do an outdoor fireplace myself you actually can you just got to do it step by step there are approximately 360 cinder blocks to that thing so it's it's quite big and the only the only time that I could really work on this was on the weekend so that's why it took so darn long and then you'll see in the video uh, a lot of those weekends we had covered up with, with rain and, and bad weather because we were doing this through the winter months. Uh, finally, we got into spring and got a little bit better weather so we could you know, get uh, all the uh, veneer stone on. But uh, just, when, you know, it's just one stone at a time that you're going to put this thing together. Uh, big Tetris uh, puzzle. But let's go, let's step around here. So this is a 43-inch firebox. Uh, it's quite large. And it puts out a good amount of heat. Now that's starting to heat up, so you're actually seeing all the smoke start to go up, up the chimney instead of out here in the front. So it works very well. I shut off the gas. There's no gas running, that, so that's just you no know, wood. But that's great to have when you're trying to just initiate and start a fire. No, no more of this, you know, kindling and stuff like that. Just light that sucker and throw some logs on, and in a couple minutes you'll have a, a fire roaring. Um, so big firebox. And you'll see me make that. That's a fake mantle. And yeah, we, we've got an electrician to run right over there. He tapped into that out that outlet right there, ran all the way up and all the way over and around. And we have an outlet that is right up there. And that gave us power because we wanted to put a TV out here. This is a great space, almost extends the living room, uh, to be out here and, and watch TV and sit by the fire just an or sports whatever uh, it's just a great great space yeah i took the uh, grate off uh, just to you know start the fire so let's walk around the back here oh we get washed out but there it is i gotta step way back here that thing's huge oh man hold on a sec maybe that's a little bit better but there that gives you a good idea of what we're dealing with so Whenever we had this thing going in, I had to be within just a few inches right there of the pergola that was going in because, and then you can see that flashing that's right there and that made us uh, kind of watertight. Now, when it rains, and if it, it rains real hard sideways, uh, you'll get a little bit of moisture that, that comes in on the sides uh, over here and on the other side. But other than that, we're real dry. Uh, and that, that mantle's been up for two years. Uh, I roughed it up and we polyed it, and it is just fine. That is hanging on a French cleat right there, by the way. Um, I do have a cover for the television. Learned my lesson the hard way. We had a, t a TV out here before, and uh, yep, it got wet. So, um, my bad. So we actually have a cover for the television. Found that on Amazon, and we covered this thing up, and it's, it's, it's been perfect. It's kept it dry and, and safe the entire time. But let's go over here on, on this side. And uh, there's the lights. Those are hooked up to our lights that are in uh, on the front of the house. There's a, there's a cable that comes through and runs right through there. Sorry about all the green. Right through there, all the way around to the front of the house. And uh, that's hooked up to the, the landscaping lights on the front of the house uh, on a timer. So whenever those come on, these come on. So the back patio stays on and they're on a timer and they'll go off about 1 a.m. So now let's take a look at the side where the gas is. So this is one of the valves right here. And all I have to do to start that thing is just reach in here, open the valve, and you'll probably see it light up. 
And we don't want it to do that because it's already going. There it goes. Yeah, so it, it just lit up. We, we don't need it, so let's just turn it off. But that line, and really and truly, um, my guy that put the pipe in, we don't need to do this. That, that was that loop right there was according to code. Um, and like you'll hear on the video, uh, the, the guys didn't uh, approve this thing um, for various reasons. But uh, we went ahead and did this thing according to code. And uh, we, we could have come back later and just snipped it and ran it right straight into this or into that and made a shorter run. That would have been fine. But it comes underground and it goes all the way over here. You'll see this uh, in the video during the build, build process, but I'll just walk you over here. It goes all the way over here onto that side of the house right there where there is another valve with a pressure regulator on it. Yeah, so we knew that when we built the house, we knew that we wanted to do something out here, either a cooking station or an outdoor fireplace. So we had that one, um, that little pipe over there on that side of the house, we had that put in and then we tapped into it so we could run it over here to the fireplace. All right, so I know that was a little bit long-winded, just kind of for an intro, but I, you know, to take six, seven months worth of a project and, and cram that in just to a few minutes, it just doesn't do any uh, service. So I wanted to give a little bit of a uh, healthy description uh, in the intro here. Now let's jump in to the build process and we'll go through it step by step. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, one second before we jump into the build process, I have to give a big hat tip and a big credit to my wife. Uh, who helped me through this entire process of building this outdoor fire fireplace. I could not have done it without her. And it's just having that support and a buddy system is huge on a project like this. So big hat tip to her. Thank you so much, all right? All right, so the first thing that we need to do is dig out the area for the footing for the fireplace. And our ground here in North Carolina is mostly clay, so that took me a long time with just a, a shovel and a wheelbarrow. And here's the framework for the box for the concrete, and my wife is in there tying up rebar. This thing's about 12 inches deep on the back side and about uh, 8 inches deep on the front side. To make things easier, I rented a concrete mixer from Home Depot, and it took 34 60-pound bags of concrete to fill that space. At the same time that I had my project going on, these guys were installing our pergola off the back of the house. And so we had to actually marry up, you see all those lines there, we had to marry up uh, the front and make sure we were exactly parallel with their work as well. So it was pretty precise. And I was within uh, about three inches of where the, uh, the top of the pergola was gonna be. So we had to do a lot of measuring. We set up guides with string that would let us know exactly where we were. All right, so here I'm putting down our first couple of rows of cinder blocks, and we've gotta be real spot on right here because this is the foundation of the fireplace and it has to be level in both directions. And so the, the footing is level, we made uh, sure of that, but this first couple of rows has to be spot on level because it's gonna kinda of dictate the whole, the whole rest of the way. Uh, this first uh, couple of rows took, I believe, 60, uh, maybe 64 cinder blocks. All right, so as I was working on the fireplace project, these guys were working on the covered pergola project. And so they had to clear out all this land, uh, the topsoil, and get that out of the way because they're going to come back and put uh, a layer of sand so they can put the travertine over the top. And I had to have the first couple of rows of the fireplace done you can see that it, the, the dirt the sand there covered up the first layer there and kind of trickles and, and tails off the uh, back side so here you can see i put in lights I, I i knew i always wanted to have lights in the front of it and they're hooked up to the house lights on the on the front transformer uh, so i just ran you know long low voltage cable all the way back to here and installed these uh, two lights but before i could cap that off I had to go ahead and run the wire and get the lights installed first. And there's a good look of it after it's capped off. So now we'll just continue on working on rows three, four, and five, and that's going to be basically the back of the firebox. All right, so this is 
row six and it's kind of a special row because it starts to form the top of the, uh, of the firebox. So let's see if I can switch it around here. All right, so on row six, since this is forming the top of the, of the firebox, you gotta cut angle iron, two of them, two inch angle iron, and have those fit right up here to where the next cinder block can, can go in place. Now, on the plans, it said to go ahead and do this first, but I wanted to go ahead and, and uh, do the trough. Um, you had to actually just cut out um, a little small section uh, about that wide from each cinder block so you could place there's a there's rebar in there uh, that we had to cut to length and then once all that is sitting in, in place uh, just put a block down get a your, your car jack and uh, had to cut a piece of two by eight right there uh, cut that perfectly to width because you don't want to have uh, any seams in here because all of your cement will just fall through um, because there's nothing holding the cement other than this block of wood from falling all the way through um, and then it's just uh, start mixing cement and pouring so this hole right here this hole right here and on the other and on the other end goes all the way down to the floor to the footing so there's rebar also all the way down to uh, the floor here and just kind of leaned across um, and then so it takes a lot of buckets to to fill this and then the trough is pretty simple you know it just takes a, a maybe a bag maybe a bag and a half of, uh, of cement to fill that whole thing but there was it was a, at least a couple of bags to fill the voids on on each corner all the way down but now we got to let this sit so i can actually go ahead now while this is uh, sitting for 24 hours and hardens up uh, I'll be able to take uh, the jack away and the, and the board away and we should have just a nice solid piece there to, to build the rest on top but now I should be able to go ahead and mortar uh, the rest of the backside here and start to establish what's going to be the chimney all right so in the previous video I uh, said level six but actually it was level seven and now this is this is level eight right here and you can see we've got the uh, making of the chimney uh, in there let's see if i can flip this around so here we are uh, the tough part was getting the 24 inch angle iron in in between over here and on that side so just get those in between and now these these two right here and then on the other side are basically just laying on a real real thin layer of of mortar which makes it kind of tough all the way around to try to get things level because those angle iron are, are kind of lifting things up and not letting it settle down but uh there's level eight and we can see the hole so now the next step is we have to do two more angle iron right here and right here and that's going to give us our 16 inch hole for the chimney all the way up All right, so this is row nine and row 10 being built right now. That's been set up now for about 48 hours, our uh, block, but I just left it there, uh, making sure that this, uh, this section here is nice, nice and solid. But here's what it looks like over here on this side. So we've, because I'm, I'm making some changes to the plan, I'm gonna do a full, you know, it's 80 inches all the way across this way. Uh, we are gonna do a gap right there so we put two blocks right here and this is going to make our 16 inch chimney so this is a 16 square a 16 inches square all the way around and that's uh, actually our hole for our chimney going all the way up and then uh, so this is just a void right here that'll just be space and we just fill it in uh, on the around the corners but uh, that's it for now making some progress All right, here we are, row 12, about to start row 13. And uh, that is a six foot ladder right there. So, cruising right along.
here we are. We're on level 14 and we kind of had a, a little snag in our project. Um, inspector came by to inspect the pergola and uh, the ceiling and all that stuff. And he came by and uh, was curious about this because uh, this wasn't permitted with the pergola. So uh, he wanted to get it permitted completely separate. So I had to permit it and he couldn't permit it as a wood burning fireplace, which is what the intention of this thing is going to be as a wood burning fireplace. So he said the only way that he's going to approve it is to make it a gas burner. So he said what to do is go ahead and complete that level right there, which is level 14 and cap it off on the top, which I still have to do. But so we finished level 14 today. But we also decided to go ahead and I'm going to switch the camera around. So we decided to go ahead and do our scratch coat. Now scratch coat is necessary to put your veneer on. So let's walk around here to the back side where we've already kind of got started on one row of veneer. And we wanted to do it on the back side because, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm a DIYer. This is my first time ever to even do anything like this. Uh, so we wanted to kind of practice back here and uh, get our order uh, our random order going. But uh, we quickly found out that we couldn't just go straight on to the uh, cinder block with the mortar, uh, which is a uh, type M. It's sitting in, in here. Yeah. Right here is the mortar that I'm using. Actually, I, I'm sorry, it is a mortar type S is what we're doing. So yeah, the, the thing was to mix up some mortar and a little bit of kind of grout mortar um, like you're going to do tile and just a, like a little bit of a cup and that gave it about the right consistency for it to stick and then you could run a trowel over it and that's going to rough up the surface which you can see if we get in real tight here it roughs up the surface and that gives the block something uh, able to kind of attach to and hold on to so this is this is still wet and uh, we'll let this dry uh, overnight and uh, tomorrow we should be ready to go ahead and start uh, laying all of the veneer that's sitting right over there. Okay, there we go. And here's my wife applying mortar to the fire brick that's gonna go in the fire box. And so this is a special type of mortar though. You just can't grab any old mortar because it'll melt. Um, so this is a special mortar that you use specifically for fire boxes and fire brick. And here's a good look at what the flue looks like. All right, so uh, long day today. Finally, uh, we had a Sunday that uh, we could work on this thing the whole day and it not be raining. It's been raining so much lately. Uh, every weekend it's been raining and uh, so we've, or I've had something going on to where I couldn't dedicate any time to it. But we made a lot of progress today. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and uh, show you what all we've done and catch you up to speed. So first thing is the firebox is finished, finally. So we've got all the fire brick and uh, you know, we didn't want to do a herringbone pattern, which I've seen that before. That was a little bit outside of my pay grade. Uh, so we just did a normal staggered pattern and uh, it goes all the way up to there. There's no need to, to run this thing uh, any higher than that right there. I actually contacted the guy with the plans and he said, no, this is uh, just fine, just like that. So uh, we were using uh, this, uh, let's turn it around here, sorry. We're using fire rock adhesive mortar right there and this came from the stone center uh, here in charlotte so uh they're super helpful and then there's uh the fire brick right there okay so a lot of progress today working up the front um and then let's uh we'll take a little gander here at uh, the back so really what we're doing is just kind of and when I say we, my wife and I, we're just kind of going one row at a time and uh, trying to stay level as we can. Uh, we're not professionals at doing this, um, so we're just doing the best that we can. But here in the front, you can see we, we used uh, just some vertical pieces uh, of about the same, same uh, width and length over there, but, uh, uh, or varying widths, actually. But uh, random vertical right across the top and uh, really all you had to do is just make the mortar a little bit more thick, uh, slap it up there, and uh, they would, and just kind of hammer them in, and then they would, they would stay just like that. So uh, no need to like put a board underneath them and, and uh, 
for them to rest on something. They just stayed just like that and then just kind of worked around. But it looks great. So we're coming along and uh, we'll check back in. Hopefully we'll continue to have better weather. Oh, I wanted to add one other thing here. Uh, you, this might look wet. Uh, that's a little bit of cement and a little bit of mortar mixed together. We had just a little bit, you know, like, you know, that far of a gap between this, this stone here and the back because, let me turn around here, our flagstone, which is right there, fits perfectly right in that gap. That was on purpose. We, uh, we put it in there uh, before we started laying that level right there. We put it in there um, and just left it there and then kind of worked around it. But then we came back and we were trying to figure out, well, we need something in there to kind of so, so the uh, flagstone would uh, lay on supported. So that is wet concrete, so it needs to dry um, and, and will, but uh, that will at least give us a base for the flagstone hearth uh, to sit on. But uh, it looks real, and yeah. And I cleaned up the lights and got those installed. That was real easy. This was literally, these are mounted now. Um, and I got those lights off of Amazon. Uh, the wire runs all the way around to the front um, and is hooked on with uh, the house lights. But uh, these are just low voltage lights and you just take that off and pull that little cover off. And all I did was just take a, 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 a drill bit and just drill into the stone and I just grabbed some one and a quarter inch wood screws and it screwed in perfectly and it mounted perfect so it's on there it's not going anywhere perfect solution all right so this is the trench for the natural gas line you can actually see the PVC in there but that's a copper natural gas line coming off this side of the house when we had the house built we knew that we wanted uh, a gas fireplace out back so we position gas on this corner of the house and it runs through this trench all the way over to that side of the fireplace and comes up and has a disconnect valve basically a valve to uh, be able to turn the gas on and off within the firebox so I had to drill a hole on this side of the fireplace and then that copper is going to feed through there and connect to a basically a burner pipe that's inside the firebox and then uh, you just turn the gas on through the valve and light that uh, burner pipe with any old like big lighter and uh, you have fire coming off your gas line which will act as our log starter all right so i'm in the shop and instead of getting a mantle for the fireplace i decided that was going to be a bit heavy and a bit too much work uh, to mount a mantle and I just didn't want to go through with it and I built one of these before uh, for our old house and this is a fake mantle so it's going to look like a beam <clears throat> and so uh, basically I've got uh, one by eights and I've cut them to length at the length that I want them to be um, and then ripped 45s all the way around except for this back side. This is the side, this is the back side that will sit against the concrete and sit against the fireplace. Um, but you can see here, we've cut 45s all the way around and everything marries up nice and neat. By the way, if you don't have any of these little 90 degree things that you can clamp onto, beautiful. Anyway, put a little glue down, glue down on the seam, glue down on the seam, and uh, just a little block here in the middle just to get, give it a little bit of stability. But, uh, uh, went ahead and um, just used 18 gauge brad nails with the air gun and just uh, put them in right there. And everything's holding steady. Looks real good. So uh, this is just the process uh, of doing it. So this is a about seven inches um, from here to here. This is the front. This Actually, this side right here is the front. This is uh, going to be the top and the bottom. Of course, the back is wide open. And then we have our end caps. Here they are. So we've already, I've already cut all the end caps and they will fit in just like that. Everything will marry up and then we'll stain it and poly it, put it. I, I like to use a French cleat. So we'll put uh, on this side a French cleat system. We'll have two of them, right? We'll just spit this thing, take that out you know, or have, a, have two French cleats. And just like this, this is what I use in, in the uh, garage. And uh, we use a French cleat system whenever I wanna hang uh, tools.
So works out great. And it uh, looks something like, uh, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. Yeah, you just slide that sucker. I might do a video on how to make one of those. I, I got to make one for a jig, but I, I might uh, make a video for that. But yeah, there's our beam. And uh, we will follow up with the rest of it as I go ahead and put the final pieces together. There you go. All right, so here's the finished product with the uh, end caps in. And I'm about to stain it, but uh, sanded it down, sanded all the corners. Yeah, I got my gloves on for staining. But I sanded all the corners down and roughed up the top. This is the front right here. So I have uh, roughed it up and about ready to put on the, the uh, first coat of stain. There were some gaps, so my measurements weren't uh, absolutely perfect. So I just kind of filled with a little bit of wood putty. You can see right here too, a little bit of wood putty in there, but the stain should do a good job because we have, uh, we've got Minwax. Uh, this is the stain I'm putting on there, which is an espresso, which is the exact same stain that we have back on the uh, um, our, our pergola in the back. So uh, we get to work your staining now. All right, so there is our fake faux beam with our espresso stain on it. And uh, man, look at that. That came out so good. This is with only one coat and I'm probably gonna leave it with one coat. I love all the imperfections in the wood. I love all the knots in there. It looks really, really good. And uh, when you stand back away from it, I mean, doesn't that look like a beam? It just looks, looks like a real beam. So it's gonna look great up there. So uh, since this thing's gonna be sitting outside, we have to put a couple coats of uh, polyurethane on there uh, to protect it so it doesn't warp or anything like that. So, cause it's, it might get a little damp sometimes, even though it'll be under the cover of the uh, covered pergola. So there we go. There's our beam. We'll put the French cleat on next and uh, get out there and hang it. So we just finished today installing all these uh, hearth pieces. So we had a bunch of uh, leftover pieces and we had to, to really uh, work this like a Tetris game and uh, cut them correctly uh, to get them to all fit in there. And then we uh, laid a little bead of mortar underneath to give them a little bit of a uh, cushion and something to stick to. But uh, um, and then left some gaps in between on purpose. That's exactly the way it looks on the inside. We still need to come back through and, and uh, fill these up a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit more. But um, yeah, and then sometimes up, like right up here in front, we had to little build something just so it would uh, kind of cap that off right in the front. Little piece of uh, duct tape, just kind of holding that up. And uh, that works out just fine. So we're gonna sit here and let this dry. But uh, there we go, there's the hearth and uh, we're almost uh, almost there. So if I can back up far enough, yeah, there's the whole thing. So I decided to go against what the inspector's suggestion was and make that a gas burner. I didn't want it to be just a gas burning. I wanted it to be a log burning fireplace with a gas starter. So I went against his wishes and went ahead and finished the fireplace, as you can see from this view right here. So we went ahead and went up uh, above the pergola. We are over two feet higher than the pergola, which is actually by code, uh, even though I didn't get an approval to do that. Um, we are still going to go by what the code said anyway. And here's a good look from underneath the covered pergola. And you may be looking at that and go, you know, that doesn't look like a very big fire uh, to me. You're right. Uh, that's actually about a 43 inch firebox, believe it or not. And uh, we just put that log in there and lit it uh, just to see how it, it worked. This is literally one of the first fires that we had in there. Uh, and the firebox in the fireplace works perfectly. All right, so I just finished putting on the final piece, which is that little cap right up on top. I'm gonna climb the ladder here and show it to you in just a second, but uh, just show you my idea of, of how I kind of solved that. I saw a bunch of different uh, ideas out there and this was my idea of how to put the chimney cover on. 
So let's climb the ladder and take a look at it. All right, so I'm going to try to do this with two cameras on. But so I got this thing off of uh, off of Amazon, and it just fit our my uh, flue, which is 16 by 16 inches, 16 a uh, square, all the way around. Uh, and this thing covers 18 by 18. And so I had the idea of just taking some fire brick that we had left over and cutting one by inch strips out of fire brick, capped off the top here with cap blocks. And then we put these one inch, just mortared those down. This was the last one that we did today. And uh, then I mortared the top of the little bricks so because it had a ledge on it. And then I could just rest it on there and it'll dry, hopefully solid just like that and that should hold it down but that was my idea who knows if it's going to work and there it is here's a few shots of the uh, finished product we couldn't be more happier with it and the way that it came out it really functions very well all right if you made it this far hopefully you found the video helpful and you're not as fearful as i was whenever i built this thing uh, my, my wife and I, uh, I, I really got to give it hands, you know, hats, hat tip to her because she was so helpful in this entire process. But hopefully you found this video helpful and you're not so fearful and that you can go out and build your own outdoor fireplace if that's what you want to do. But uh, hey, if you have any questions though, please give those, uh, give those questions down here in the comment section and uh, I'll do my best to answer anything uh, that you might have. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.